If you ever heard about VENV or virtual environments in Python programming language, then this tutorial is exactly for you because in this tutorial you will learn the benefits of using virtual environments on your Python projects and why you should start using virtual environments today when you come up with a Python project. Now if by any chance this is your first time on my channel then welcome. If you want to become a Python developer or a DevOps engineer then this channel is exactly for you. So if you will enjoy the content please hit the like button and as well as subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. Okay, so let's assume that you have the following code running on your computer. Now, this code relies on some library that you have to install and we're gonna call one of its functions that is called do something. Now, one of the reasons that this program will run successfully, it is because you have Python installed on your computer, but there's actually one more reason that this program will execute, and it is the fact that the system interpreter is configured properly in PyCharm. So when you use PyCharm or any kind of IDE, you probably need to point to your Python that is installed on your computer on whatever IDE you use. Now here's the exact problem that we look to solve when we rely on this system interpreter in our projects in our computer. So let's assume that we have those three projects installed on our computer. Now for sure the first two projects will require the Flask library installed on our system interpreter, meaning the exact Flask library with the version of 1.1.2. Now let's say that in the next day you want to create a new Flask project, but by the time Flask released another version like 2.0, so what that means, it means that you're gonna need to open up your terminal and run a command like pip install flask in order to reinstall flask and have the newer version of this flask library. But when you do something like this, then you're gonna affect your first two projects that are relying on the version number one. So we cannot take for granted that flask projects that have been written with version one will function properly with Flask version 2. So that means that we are going to have problems now executing our older Flask projects. So in order to solve exactly this problem, Python comes up with a solution that is called virtual environment. So by creating those virtual environments, you can have a separated interpreter for each of your projects. And that will mean that you will manage libraries for each one of your projects separately and that is a great advantage when you are going to have multiple projects on your computer. So then your project organization on your computer could look something like the following and this will mean that you will not have to override old libraries when they come up with a new version. Alright, so now I'm inside the terminal and I'm using a basic Python project to show you how to create a virtual environment here. So the way that you can do this is only by using this python-m command here. Now dash m argument stands for the module that we want to choose to work with right now. Now I said that the module's name is called venv, so we're gonna need to specify this module name. And the second argument will be the name of the virtual environment that we want to create here. Now by convention, it is acceptable if you will name your virtual environment in the same name of the module name. So you don't really have to name your virtual environment something that is different than venv because it's just a convention and you can do that. But if you really want to create a virtual environment with a different name, then you can do that. Now this command works both for Windows and Linux, so it is okay to execute that the way it is. Now, once I will press enter here, it might take a few seconds because creating a virtual environment is actually a little bit heavy process. So after a few seconds, you can see that now we are ready to go. And if we were to say something like DIR, then you can see that now we have a new directory that is named VNV. So let's see what is the next things that we can do from here. All right, so now that we have done this, then we're gonna need to somehow interact with our virtual environment that we have created here. Now, in order to do that, we need to use a built-in script that will help us to interact with this virtual environment that we have created. So in Windows, we need to specify something like the following. So I'm going to go inside my VNM directory that has been created, 
and then I'm going to refer to a specific file and just execute it. So it will be backslash scripts, and then we will call to a script that is named activate. Now this script using batch file, but if you were to use Linux environment now on your computer, then the command is going to be a little bit different. So it is going to use the source command and then you want to refer to a totally different location which looks like vnv bin activate. So this is where the script is located in a Linux operating system. All right, so if we will execute this, then you can see how we have this specification in here that we use a virtual environment and that is a good sign because now the libraries that we will install will be installed in this virtual environment and not in our system interpreter. So in order to prove you that, then I'm going to use one more terminal window in order to show you the differences between the libraries inside this virtual environment to what I have in my system interpreter. So I will use this command to split my panes in a Windows terminal. And now on a random location, I'm just going to say something like pip freeze. Now pip freeze is a command that stands for showing all the libraries that you have installed with the versions near of them. So if we were to run that, then you can see that we receive our libraries that are installed in here and we also see their versions. Now let's take Flask for example, right? So I'm going to scroll up here. Now you can see that I have actually Flask installed in here, for example, and I have a lot of libraries that are installed as well. Now let me close this and go back now to our original window and use the same command as well, pip freeze. Now you can see that I don't even have libraries that are installed in there, so this really shows the difference between system interpreter to the virtual environments that you can go ahead and create. Now we might also want to understand how we can go back to working on our system interpreter again. So it is going to be as easy as saying something like deactivate because we are deactivating the interaction with our virtual environment and that command goes the same with Linux environments as well. So now if I was to run that then you can see that I don't have this vnv in here near my directory. So this is how you can deactivate your interaction with the virtual environment. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and use here again this activate script in order to work with my virtual environment. And I'm going to just install some random libraries. Okay, so now that we have installed some libraries, then let's see what will pip freeze show us. So you can see that some of the libraries are also coming up with some more dependencies. So the fact that we have installed three libraries doesn't really mean that we are relying on exactly three libraries because some libraries are the dependency of other libraries. So it needs to install dependencies as well. So there's actually more than 10 libraries now that this project needs to have in order to run successfully. Now I did not really talk about what is the most important case that you like to execute pip freeze? So say that you upload this project now to GitHub and you want to be able to execute this project in another computer, but you don't want to mess up the destination computer's system interpreter. So what that means, it means that you'll probably need to go ahead and create a virtual environment as well as in the other computer that you work with but then you will not remember what were the dependencies that you have used in order to develop your project. So that is exactly why we would like to use pip freeze. It is a best practice to execute this pip freeze command to actually being aware what were the dependencies that we have relied on in order to run this project successfully. So when you work with a virtual environment, usually it is a great idea to document your libraries in a file that is named requirements.txt. And this is exactly what I'm going to do now. And then later on, we will see the benefits of creating such a file. So I'm going to grab everything from here. So let me bring my file browser to here and go ahead and create a new text file that I will name it intentionally requirements. And then I will open this file and I will paste in the libraries that we have received from this pip freeze command. Now, once I will have such a file inside my project, 
then I will always have the option to be aware of my dependencies in order to run whatever project that we are running here. So now let's say that we will delete completely our virtual environment here. So I'm going to go ahead and use a deactivate. And now I'm simulating a situation that I'm sitting on another computer trying to execute this project successfully on my local computer. So let me clean the screen here and use a delete directory command that looks something like the following on Windows. So I will say rmdir forward slash s forward slash q and then I will delete the virtual environment directory here. So to verify that everything has been deleted, I can use dir and you can see that I don't have the virtual environment directory here, but I do have the requirements.txt, which is very important. Now I can allow myself to clean the screen again and recreate this virtual environment. So it will be python-m, vnv and vnv again. And now that I have created this, I have to do only two things in order to install my dependencies directly without worrying about remembering what were my dependencies. So I have to use this activate script again, and it will be something like the following. And then the only thing that I have to do now is to use pip install dash R. So this is a way that you can install recursively libraries. And then I want to refer this pip install command to my requirements.txt file. So now that I will execute this, then I will have my dependencies installed in only one command. And that is the best practice when you manage projects that are having some libraries that you are relying on. So to sum up, it is a great idea to execute this pip freeze command once a while and actually add it inside your requirements.txt file. And then you will not have to worry about remembering your dependencies if you will switch on between your computers and even if you want to show your project to your friend. And the only thing that the other person needs to do now is to go ahead and create a virtual environment, activate it, and then execute pip install dash r requirements.txt. Okay, so now I deactivated our virtual environment again to talk about the next topic. Now, the most important thing that we want to be aware of when we work with virtual environments is to always not maintain virtual environments when we work with GitHub. Now, maintaining virtual environments as part of our source project is a bad practice because virtual environments are usually very heavy. So if we were to execute a command that will be responsible to display the size on disk of the virtual environment, then let's see what kind of size we talk about. So it will be dir, forward slash s, and then let's see what virtual environment looks like. So you can see we have tons of files in this virtual environment, but further than that, we can see that its size is 300 megabytes. Now, as long as we keep installing libraries on our project, our virtual environments could even be close to one gigabyte. So that is one main reason that we never want to maintain virtual environments when it comes to maintaining projects with GitHub. Now, the way that we can overcome this is by using a special file that is called git ignore. So in that special file that we name git ignore, we can specify that we like to ignore the virtual environment directory in each time that we push changes. So let me use a few minutes to show you how this could be achieved. Okay, so I'm going to rely on one of the GitHub projects that I have created for the purposes of this tutorial. So I'm going to use a git clone command and I'm just going to paste in the URL that I'm going to work with, which you can also grab from the description of this video. So now that I have cloned this repository, then I can go ahead and use a cd command to basically see what we have inside this VN tutorial project. And then I'm going to clean our screen and let's use a dir command. So you can see that I have everything that I have included throughout the explanations in this tutorial. And I also included a very special file that is called intentionally dot git ignore. So that is a convention file when you have GitHub projects and you can just list there a list of directories or files that Git will understand to ignore when you push changes. So now 
let's go ahead and try to change something in our main.py file and before that let's create a virtual environment file and let's see how git will ignore those files so i'm going to clean our screen and i'm going to create here a new virtual environment so it will be again python dash m vn vm and then i'm going to say vm scripts activate and then I'm going to say pip install dash r requirements dot txt. So we will have the libraries installed on our virtual environment. And now I will allow myself to open this project in PyCharm. Okay, so let's see what we have here. So we have the main.py file, which includes two lines of code. And then we also have this git ignore file. Now you can see that this git ignore file includes this vnv and then the forward slash right after it. So this is actually pointing to the entire vnv directory that we want to ignore when we push some changes to our repository. So in order to show you that, then let me create some real Python files that will actually make use in this project. So let's create some Python files and write some random code here. Print testing git ignore so this will be our first file and then i will allow myself to repeat myself here and use a b.py file and then i will go ahead and say print printing something else like that and then i will also change this main.py file and i will add print another line like that and now the next thing that we want to do here is to probably track all of our changes. Now we don't want to specify to git that we like to commit the changes for a, b and main.py file, but we generally want to grab the files that were changed. So the convention to do that will be to go to our terminal and track the files that have been changed. Okay, so I'm back at my terminal and I deactivated the virtual environment that I have worked with. Now I'm going to run here git add dash dash all. Now this argument is basically responsible to add all the files that we have changed, removed or added when we work with this project now. So normally you could use git add and manually add files that you prepare for pushing to your repository. But actually dash dash all is a very simple command that just tracks all. And now I expect the git to read the git ignore file and actually ignore the virtual environment that is already there. So if I was to run that and then say something like git commit and then let's provide a random message by passing in dash m and then use double quotes and say new commit. Now you can see how this only tracks the new created file and as well as the changed file. So we see three files changed, four insertions and one deletion. So the only thing that is left here, I can use just a git push command and we are good to go. And the VM will never be tracked now. So again, that will be the best practice when you work with virtual environments. You will never want to commit virtual environments to your GitHub repositories just because they are too heavy and it is very hard to maintain them in your projects. All right, so if you learned something new on that tutorial, please be sure to hit the like button so we can spread this video to more people and as well as subscribing to my channel so you will never miss a Python video and I will see you next time.